Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top Down Shooter. This video is about adding some retaliation when the player is damaged. And a special thanks to all my supporters. Thank you for helping me help others. We'll get started by copying the on damage taken changed and on damage taken functions from the enemy character to the character. Since the character is based on an A character and the enemy character is also based on A character, they're not sharing a parent, this functionality needs to be duplicated. Ideally, as in my intro to game playability system for Unreal 5.4, they would have a shared parent and the functionality that's duplicated like this could go in one place. As a reminder, on damage taken is part of a health set delegate, unlike the just checking for an attribute value changed, so it, it looks like this instead. Pop that in over here. Make sure that it is the correct class. And lastly, the actual function itself, which just calls the blueprint version for now. Right, and I'll see you in the editor. So the first thing we're going to do in the editor is we're going to take our GE burning gameplay effect. I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it GE reflective burn. Open that up. So for this, we're going to change the duration to 20 seconds. Period can just stay at the default of one. We do not need to apply damage, so we just remove that modifier. The gameplay queue will just keep the same. This will just apply the burning Niagara system to the player. And for our attach tag, we're going to set this to a new tag called power.reflectiveBurn. And that should be good. Our new gameplay effect, we can just create TDS gameplay, gameplay ability. Oh, I meant create our new gameplay ability. This will be GA reflective burn as well. And in here, I'm just going to pop open uh, Fireball. Just to grab this stuff here, save a little bit of time. Now, the purpose of this GA is just to apply the GE. So we're going to get our avatar. We're going to get our ability system component from that. And then we're going to call apply game. Apply. Gameplay effect to self. And this will be our reflective burn. And as always, if you ever want to be able to call a gameplay ability again, you need to call end ability every time. And then in our third person character base class, we want to go to our event graph, which by the way, I have way too many windows open up here, so we can just close all tabs to the right. But the event graph was up in there, I like to have it open, so you just double click that and put that back in. Thought that did get rid of the construction script, oddly. Hmm. All right. Down here, we just have our event on damage taken. And since we want to override this in the child, Quinn, or Manny character, we can just right click this, convert this event to a function. And so when that happens, you might look over here, you're like, okay, well, 
why did it disappear? You can do a search up here on damage. Once I type it for all, and you can see it's right in there. It was under functions, it's under gas. That's because this little tick is hiding it. So it's right in there. So with that done, we can then go into our Quinn. And for our functions here, pop this out a bit, we can override on damage taken. We don't actually need to call our parent here, so we can get rid of that. Now here's a funny little thing. I hit delete, it doesn't get rid of the return node. But we'll use that. And just so that I don't forget later, I'm going to go into my class defaults. And in default abilities, I'm going to add reflective burn, which I just realized the ability input ID should be oh, well, utility, which is uh, set to F. All right, so in on damage taken, the first thing we want to do is get our ability system component. We're going to use that to get owned gameplay tags. So that we can check as tag. The tag we're looking for is the one we just created, which is power dot reflective burn. Now, an interesting thing here is that in our GE, we're manually adding that tag here. But a gameplay queue is also tag based, so we could have actually checked for gameplay queue dot burning. The problem with doing that is that if the character is ever actually burning legitimately, then um, it just it conflates those two things. And we don't want that. Drag that out, hit B. So this logic is only valid when we have our power active. We also want to make that it's only valid when our damage causer has an ability system component. And for that, we can just call is valid function version. And when that is the case, we'll again get our ability system component. We'll use this to make an outgoing spec. This will be for our heat up so that we can call assign tag set by caller magnitude, sending along the heat set by caller value. And in this case, we're just going to use get damage. So the damage that Quinn is taking multiplied by some value, we'll just use five. And that's how much heat that that enemy character will take. And then of course we need to call the apply a gameplay effect spec to target. The target is our damage causer. System component. Over spec handle, we have our source, conveniently named target. I will never stop mocking that. And that should be good. So then, what that looks like is when we pick Quinn, we go in here. Actually, let me throw up this. You can see we have no tags, so nothing's happening. Once I hit F, we now have our powered out reflective burn and take a few hits, and the target becomes burning. I'll show again on these targets over here burning and burning. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do.
And if you would like to support this channel, watch these videos two weeks early, or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.